What is going on YouTube? I'm sitting behind my first piece of real estate I ever bought. And actually the piece of real estate that got me into this whole thing of investing and becoming an agent. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over why I chose real estate, how I was able to buy this property at 20 years old, and how it's kind of performed since the day I bought it in 2019, as it's been a four and a half years, give or take. I think I bought it in May of 2019, and it's currently July of 2024. So let's get right into it. So I'll keep the beginning brief of how I got into real estate, and it was simply because out of high school, I started taking an interest in reading some books, and what really piqued my interest was real estate, money and financial freedom so financial freedom through real estate is really what caught my eye and really when i found like podcasts i had to drive a job that i drove a car in so whole time i could kind of listen to whatever i wanted to and i would just put on podcasts and learn the whole time i would listen to podcasts like bigger pockets every day for at least a year straight and before that I was doing a lot more reading and that's kind of really what got me into the interests of real estate and how I kind of learned about house hacking and how you could basically buy a house and then rent it out and live for cheap while owning and building equity in your wealth. Now you're probably asking yourself how did someone like me buy a house at 20 years old because you know a lot of people don't even buy a house in their 40s. So it was pretty simple to be honest. I mean I was just always pretty good with money growing up. I was a saver. It wasn't even because I wanted to save. I just liked the idea of saving and being able to be like ooh look how much money I have. I think at like 12 years old I had a couple thousand dollars just from birthdays and stuff. I didn't get a lot during birthdays. I just literally saved it all all the time. So I just enjoyed doing that. So that side of it was pretty easy. And then coming out of high school, I would say there I graduated at 17, so like a day after I turned 18, I got a job just working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and that's really what built up my employment. Of course, that also helped me get a nest egg for putting down on this, even though it didn't cost me that much out of pocket to buy this place. It was $5,000, but getting that employment history, which banks want to see, especially with someone at 20 years old, already having two years of work history. I had credit cards that I already showed that I built my credit score and I had good credit history. I had good payment history. I had a truck that I had payments on. That was probably my biggest financial mistake just because car payments suck. They suck a lot. You're just paying on something that just keeps going down in value every single day you drive it every single mile you put on just decreases how much it's worth so that was a horrible mistake but hey it worked out and it helped build my credit so with all that and having the w-2 employment history was really what helped me actually be able to get a mortgage and get pre-approved for buying a house at such a young age at 20 years old and Looking back now as an entrepreneur, as a real estate agent and investor, I don't like W-2. I don't ever wanna to have to deal with working in it again, but it did help a lot being able to get that loan because it's a lot easier to get qualified with a W-2 income than like a 1099 self-employed type deal because those they have to really dive deep to actually see that you're telling the truth on what you make for money. So now you're probably wondering after five years, well, four years, four and a half years of owning it, how is this property doing and how's it perform? Now, before I get to how it's performed, make sure you hit a like on this video if it's giving you some value or keeping you entertained and you've watched this far. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it does help with the channel and you can catch more videos like these that I put out. So let's knock on some wood, but this place has actually treated me great. In the past four and a half years, I really haven't had to do a ton to it. I've had to replace, you know, little maintenance things like a hot water heater. Um, I painted this porch, but it looks like crap again, so I'm just going to have to build new steps and re redo it again. I probably did this like a year and a half, two years ago. No, probably two and a half years ago now. You know how time get lost during COVID. So have to do that, but just little stuff here and there. And I've probably had four or five groups of tenants. They've all been great. None of them ever have been late. I haven't had to deal with any evictions, anything like that, which is awesome because that's the biggest thing with getting into this stuff is you just have to learn to screen your tenants properly and wait for the correct tenants. These two tenants I have here now are fantastic. They only come to me when they really have a problem. And the only problem I've had with them wasn't even their fault. It was just two leaky toilets toilets that almost tripled nope over tripled my water bill for the for that uh quarter so that was a little concerning because it's usually around three hundred dollars and it was almost eight hundred so that was a little concerning but we got that fixed everything's fixed and now it's running good 
But I'm gonna give you a quick number breakdown of kind of how this thing has performed over the past few years. And just take this with a grain of salt because one, it's an estimate. Two, a lot of stuff has happened in the market where it's not like I actually have this cash liquid or anything like that. I'm just telling you what I've been able to collect through rents and kind of what equity has happened and what my value of the property is now. So I bought this place for 172,000 in 2019. Today, it's easily worth 300 plus. So right there is about $125,000 worth of equity I have in the place, which is pretty sweet. And then I just checked today because I was doing some accounting stuff for being a landlord and putting in all the expenses and income and all that. And today I just crossed over $100,000 I've collected in rental income from this property. So that was pretty eye-opening. Again, this is not cash flow. This is not this is before you have to pay the mortgage, you have to pay taxes, you have to pay all that stuff. Don't think it's just take home. It's not. But I'm just saying it's cool that it's created $100,000 in rental income. It's created over $125,000 worth of equity. And it's just wild because now I'm 25 years old and I already have a great nest egg sitting right here for my future. So when people say, oh, it's not the right time, it's not the right time to buy. I bought this. I thought it was overpriced. I thought it was too small. <laughs> Well, good thing I didn't rely on my thinking, huh? Because I would have been wrong. So yeah, that's my building. This is my first investment property. And this is how it's performed in the last five years.